it probably won't be a full two hours at all because it's just you guys so it should be pretty easy the, the more people in the group obviously the more conversation there is you know i tell people take turns and all that kind of stuff but i guess it isn't going to be such a big deal okay did now you didn't have to but did you do any of the readings yep no okay i didn't know there was readings so sorry all right. i was just busy that's okay it's 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 a different experience when you've when you've done the readings, but in a way it's kind of better mm. because I I'm going to tell you to pretend you didn't for a good chunk of this time. All right. So okay. what you do? Welcome to the About Time workshop. <clears throat> this is the first workshop in a series at the moment of three. I have not been giving the second and third one yet until I have more people through the first one, but. Right at the moment, I'm doing these through Zoom, but they can be done easily over in a group setting, which is what I did in Salinas, California with, when I rolled these out. And I was able to um, get the kinks out in person with, with live human beings. And it was fun. Got a lot of feedback on it. And, and it was really eye-opening. Some of the things that I thought were important, they found something else important and so on. I'm noticing when I'm talking, I had, I had dental work done. I'm noticing when I talk, it hurts. And the part is like, gee, I'm getting a crown put, pop, one popped off and now they're putting a new one on. So it's just like, wow, I didn't realize that until I start talking how much it, it can hurt in there. Anyway. Okay. So the readings for today, which are not super important, was a video as much as you can get through as possible. I only got about 20 minutes into it. Leonard, did you watch the video? Did not watch the video. Okay. There's a video. Hmm. There is. Why did you not get through it? If it's not interesting, or I don't think he has the tolerance for it. To be honest with you, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm asking you, Susan, because you, you said you only got through 20 minutes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the the guy's talking, and then I'm saying to myself, he's on the on the stage. I'm saying he's at a conference, and I'm saying. Okay, now the audience is going to rip him. They're going to be like, all right, dude, what the heck are you talking about? And no, they get up and they're like, what about crop circles? Where do they fit in? You know, and then else, it was just so credulous that it was just hurting. <laughs> I just was like, oh, this hurts. It hurts me so much to see a room of people just asking these questions with a straight face. And, and the rest of the audience is like, yes, I want to know that too. It was, it was really kind of, not your kind of group. No, I didn't think you'd be able to do it, Leonard, at all. <laughs> I don't think you could have gotten through the first couple of minutes. He's a, oh. Leonard's a physicist. He does physics stuff. So, okay. so the topics I thought would be very hard for him to watch, like, you know, it would just be like, like a young earth creationist watching, a, you know, a geologist watching a young earth creationist movie or right. something. It would just be really like... But you're so wrong. No, you're doing it. That's not. Anyway, that's what I thought. Okay. We're going to do some imagining. We're going to put on our uh, our imagining hats. And what we're going to do is the, the goal of this of this workshop is to is to help us learn to have better conversations with people. Because what I think, and you guys can correct me if you're wrong, I'm wrong, is that We've kind of gotten a little isolated. We've got a little jaded, just like I was saying, that it's hard to watch these people. But we've gotten a little isolated, mostly because we haven't been interacting like we normally have because of the pandemic. And we are um, more inclined to roll our eyes, to you know, cross our arms and just throw up our hands and say, I give up on these people. And what I think we need to do is find ways of having a better conversation with people who have some pretty strange beliefs, but not yeah. in a way that's um, attacky and not in a way that it's um, going to come off like you're so superior or whatever. Yes. And so we don't want to do that. What we want to do is my belief is, is that, you know, we had all these weird beliefs about, you know, we saw these people who believed in flat earth. They didn't go to the moon bananas underneath the crystal dome are going to make them stay ripe longer or not ripen too fast or whatever the thing is we didn't really see it necessarily as harmful i mean it wasn't like it was going to cause somebody to die or something like that it was a it was like a benign magical belief that seemed kind of dangerous in theory if they went kept going down the further rabbit hole oh, hold on a second i gotta let these cats out of my door they cannot mm -hmm. figure out how to open the door it's sitting yeah but there's there's no way that 
beliefs like that would ever cause like an insurrection or something. No, so that's my point is that I think that the science community or the scientific skepticism community has taken that kind of for granted. We've all, we've called it, well, some people derogatorily called it Bigfoot science and uh, skepticism. Mm. And so they've kind of thrown it off like, you know, why are you dealing with these flat earthers, hollow earthers, crystal healers and stuff like that? It's not really harm. Let's go for the big dogs, you know, and then they would name the big dogs that we're supposed to be able to knock off when we can't even get getting, we're not getting very well with like even like astrology on uh, on newspapers and things still. We can't get rid of that, yet they want us to go after these huge, big, big things, you know? So for a very long time, we have just been, oh yeah, it's just the Bigfoot people. It's just the Bigfoot people. Just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. It's just a hobby. Who cares? And then the pandemic happened. And what yeah. we found is magical thinking is, a you know, people who believe in magical thinking are dangerous whenever they keep you know get into that ecosystem and they're like uh you know fueling it with the other person and then when the closed society everybody's on the internet and so on and then we shift our sides what happens is we the 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 flat earthers i don't know if you saw the movie um beyond the curve, beyond the curve. yeah on netflix yes i think yeah, i did beyond the curve so you see this world of these um flat earthers and then what you find out is they turn it they're into anti-vax and then they, mm -hmm. and then anti-vaccine obviously it hurts us i mean it was now it's not just bigfoot belief it is these people are really could be killing everybody they could be killing other people by their inactivity of wearing masks not taking it yeah. seriously not uh you know and just and dissuading people into getting vaccines i have uh people i had known that wouldn't vaccinate their elderly family members because they thought it was going to harm them so i mean it, it's dangerous to people in their families as well so yeah i thought is that what we've been doing is we've we've not been taking it seriously these these benignish beliefs and then in some cases that can grow into something very serious as we saw with the interactions and stuff so what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on somebody you like that you would like to have a conversation with that you want to interact with so that you're, you're going to come up with an imaginary person it may be a real person who is your um, somebody you're going to see on a regular basis okay this is not you're having a conversation with somebody in the elevator or sitting in the plane next to you for an hour or whatever this is somebody like a co-worker a family member a neighbor somebody that you're going to meet on a on a consistent ba consensus basis maybe every day maybe you know every few days or maybe once a few weeks or something like that or family gatherings but you want to be able to continue having a relationship with them maybe you like them you just want to be able to have better conversations because i think what what is good for society is that if we have better conversations with people about things that aren't necessarily like injecting bleach conversations you know which is dangerous no way no dude you can't do that if we have conversations about smaller things then what will happen is if it's respectful if it's um done in a way where they feel heard and that they don't feel like you're making them feel like an idiot then they'll come to you whenever they have questions about bigger problems bigger issues they'll say hey brian you know when we were talking about bigfoot you're probably right you know that there, there probably is no bigfoot but you know what i really have a question about this medical treatment now i i'm hearing bad things about it you know and what do you think you know so because you're you're open to that you're open to have those kind of conversations with them and they're more likely to trust your opinion right and i think i think it's something that i struggle with just sort of interrupt but i i know at least my girlfriend she says it even too that i almost like i don't know she thinks that a lot of like me and maybe others in our circle have had religious trauma or whatever like my to give you a quick you know my mother had schizophrenia and so she was like I remember she kind of kidnapped me for a while and had me locked in a trailer and religious stuff and thought lots of you know thought the government was spying on her through the tv and all that stuff so she feels like it's the one topic like misinformation and stuff like that where I almost just get triggered and I just like get she says, I'm normally very calm, but I can just be triggered and very, 
like angry and can't talk about it because I just like get angry about it. Just this misinformation stuff just drives me nuts. And and maybe I'm too, you know, too well, triggered. You mean, you, you I need to be able to. You need to do... walk away. There's sometimes that you've just got to be like, okay, I can't deal with this. And, and there's nothing about what I'm talking about saying that we have to go front head on head with everybody about these things. So, yeah. oh, absolutely. There are like red flag things that I have my immediate my my hackles go up in the back of my uh my hair and i just yeah oh wait wait a minute wait you're talking about what here mm -hmm. let me tell you and you just go <clears throat> full on attack dog right like yeah. I, I know way more about this but the idea is let's see if we can let's see let's see what you say by the time of this lesson okay but i've heard that from a lot of people and i know a lot of people like that that just cannot oh my gosh they cannot i can't let it go yeah. yeah so here we go think of your person that is somebody that you would like to have a conversation with you need to you need to be able to get along with them you want to get along with them you like them in other areas um but uh, they have some strange beliefs and you don't want to be attacking them so you want to be more like how do we have a conversation one of the problems is, is that just having a conversation with some people is difficult because you're on two different worlds of words mean different things. So what, throw these out. What are some words that um, mean something to the world of science or critical thinking that means something different to a person who tends to be a believer? Or theory. 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 Oh, theory. theory. Yeah, theory. Yeah. Definitely theory. Mm -hmm. So I mean, words completely that, different things. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, knowledge, truth, uh, evidence, evidence. Yeah. yeah, I have evidence. That's true. There's, there's belief. I, I have evidence that you can communicate with dead. Yeah, because my dad told me to. Yeah, and you yeah. People, people have proved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other words. Yeah. Uh, having an open mind. Yes. Yeah. That's one of those phrases they say. You don't have an open mind. You're all closed-minded. You skeptics. Yeah. There is a good um, because that, oh, you know, gravity is only a theory. Right. Someday yeah. we're going to jump off a building. We're going to, we're not going <laughs> to, we're not going to fall. <clears throat> How about energy? Yeah. But there's energy around you. Mm-hmm. It's all over you and it's energy all over you. You're like, ooh, get it off. So, yes. those kinds of, so those kinds of words mean one thing to us and they mean another thing to somebody else in some cases. And so if you don't even have a common vocabulary, it's really difficult to have really good, meaningful conversations with them because they don't understand what you mean by that word. Also, <clears throat> our community tends to be the type that wants to throw an ad hominem, not ad hominem, but a logical fallacy at people. You know, have you ever been in a situation and people are like, they're, they're, they're making these statements, you're like, straw man, <laughs> wrong. That's an argument from authority. I mean, the person you're talking to doesn't care. You've just, they're like, oh man, well, they don't care if they know about what those phrases mean. <laughs> and if they did know they still wouldn't care yeah that's right yeah i mean you're just belittling him at a certain point and it's it's setting it up this 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 dichotomy that you know i'm more superior to you because i know these fancy logic words and you don't so what, matt, matt delante i would say this for the logical <laughs> fallacy guy he oh yeah to throw that stuff out they drive me crazy they're yeah. like, let's figure out the logical fallacy and they're like can we just have a conversation? I don't really know. I don't want to. I don't want to go there. Okay. Yeah, I've wanted to try and learn some of those logical fallacies, off, so I have it off the top of my head. Right. But it's yeah. probably better not to. You're right. It's 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 okay. It's interesting, but it's not. I don't know. I have a little problem with it. Okay. It's, it's good to know them, but it's uh, uh, yeah. it's not necessarily where you want to start the conversation. No, you don't want to go yeah. to the reader. You don't want to go to that. Okay, so one of the things we're doing, so I've been working with CFI. This is the uh, CFI USA. So this is what I've been doing. 
is we want to have these kind of conversations with people, these workshops, because we think that we should be able to pull people in and have better conversations with them. And um, part of the issue is that we want to be able to disseminate the information, some of the things in the workshop. So any of these workshops that I'm doing, I'm happy to do them again and uh, change them and hand them off to people. Adrian wants to start doing these in Canada and hand them off and change them to, to modify whatever they want to do. So I picked a topic that's kind of simple. And what we're, we're going to talk about today is UFOs and hair dryers. Okay, I know that some seems amazing, but I have notes and I'm just making sure I don't I don't go over and skip a lot of stuff. Okay, so what we're going to concentrate on something is something that doesn't have immediate harm, like you're injecting bleach or jumping off a building or anything like that. We're going to use, I want you guys to practice using do and don't examples. So an example, uh, Leonard, give me an example of how would you talk to somebody with a don't? Example, what don't you do when you're trying to talk to somebody about some kind of harmful belief? Don't interrupt them. Okay, what else? Um, don't talk down to them. And don't assume that they uh, know the things that you know. Well, that's good too. Yeah, I hadn't heard that one. Okay, Brian, what were some of the do's you should do? Do, do, do. I said do, do. <laughs> um do sort of meet them at their level more mm -hmm. um do ask them questions rather than just facts give them facts um what else um yeah do just question their beliefs and just give them questions i think is the main thing for me what are what are the, some of the physical things that might happen Leonard, you start. What would be the physical things you should do when you're physically they see when you're? Well, I thought you were going to start with a don't. So you know, don't slap them in the face. <laughs> don't slap yourself <laughs> in the face. Yeah. Um, do uh, relax. Don't uh, don't get uh, you know physically uh, you know don't don't crowd them. Uh, just calm, be calm. Mm -hmm. Brian, you got something to add? No, he he took my dues as well. Uh, just uh, yeah, do to stay calm and and try not to let your own emotions, you know, get in the way. Try to just be logical and mm -hmm. and you know relaxed and have a conversation. Yeah, make eye contact and nod and. You know, make those kind of gestures or whatever. That's like mm -hmm. I'm listening. I am actually listening to you. I'm yeah, that's my true. Eyes. I'm not backing off. I'm not crossing my arms. You know, I'm just yeah. Like, try to actually understand them. Maybe, them. Kind of, yeah, like, try to actually understand them. I think. Right. Okay. So these are going to be quick interactions, and I'm going to put you guys into little breakout rooms. Brian, have you ever used a breakout room on Zoom? <laughs> no, never. Okay. Well, okay. Um, with three of us, I'm not sure how necessary that is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I I'm surprised. To, I want you to talk. Okay. All right. Here's what you're going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to lead you through a situation. Now, the first situation is, is it your friend, whoever this imaginary friend is, that may actually be real, has told you in uh they've shown you their phone and they said hey you guys i have this weird thing that happened to me or hey hey brian hey leonard this weird thing happened to me the other day i'm going to show you a photo of what that picture is and i actually am going to show you a photo let's see which screen did i have i have so many screens let me see which one did i open it up on where are you oh there it is it's on the same screen let me put it on this opposite screen <clears throat> And they're going to show you one of these four photos. It doesn't matter which one. They're all the, they're all the same of um, different kinds. And these are taken off the internet, off of Mick West. Um, um, Mick West, the, um, yeah, here it goes. Okay. The guy who's been doing a lot of work with uh, with UFOs. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. So these are, just pick whatever you want. These are different various um uh, screenshots of these 
like burns. They're, they're red marks that are kind of like a burn mark on the skin. And you can see hmm. there's, there's different patterns to them. And I want you to pretend your friend is showing these to you. One of them, at least. And saying, I had this really weird mark on my body. It's gone now. It was there for a few weeks. I don't know what it is, but it's really weird because look at how they're roundish or there's lines or whatever. But, you know, I, I get this really weird feeling about it. There's something more to this and it's gone now and it didn't hurt. And I don't know how I got it, but it's weird. And you, my friend, Brian, or my friend, Leonard, you, it's the person I was talking to, you know, we've had great conversations in the past and I, I'm really interested in what you think this is. Okay. That's all you know. You don't know anything about hair dryers. You don't know anything about UFOs at this point. All you know is that your friend is showing you a photo of something they took on their own body. Okay. Now I'm going to put you in a breakout room. You're going to be there two minutes. So this is quick. What I want you to do is practice good phrases. How would you handle it? What would you say to this person that would let them know that you're not attacking them, you're not rolling your eyes. What are you going to say? You're remembering that you don't know anything beyond this, but you do know the one thing you do know is that your friend tends to have some kind of wild stuff. You know, they they're they kind of go there. You know, they got that magical thinking going. This isn't this isn't a medical doctor <clears throat> that you're talking to. So you're going to see a sign, uh, something that comes up on your screen. Brian, just click the button that says, uh, go to your room. Or Susan Gerbic's invited you to your room. Go and you talk. It's going to be quick, okay. two minutes. And so I'm I'm supposed to talk for two minutes? Well, you and Luna are going to talk. We're going to talk to each other? Yes. Okay. Which, which one of us has which role? Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. We're back. I gave you a little more than a couple of minutes, but that's okay. So tell me what you guys, how did you have this conversation with your friend? Who wants to start? Did, do you hear that when we're in this breakout room? Okay. Yeah. So what's what's the point of having us in a breakout room if you don't? Because I want you guys to be able to talk. If, oh. if there's more people here, I would put you in different groups with different people. I see. That's kind of cool. I've never done that. So, huh. Yeah, I think we just talked about how we would try to approach the person and, you know, I like talking like I think the Socratic method, asking questions. Um, what did you say? What were the words you used? That's an interesting perspective. Uh, what were, how did you come across that? Where, when it was did on that my body. happen? It was yeah, on my yeah when, when did you first notice it? When did you first notice it? Yeah. Um, uh, what, what do you do, think it is? Yeah, what do you What do you think it is? Um, I can see how that would be concerning. Oh, that's yeah, a good one. yeah, we haven't had that's that. a good one. Yeah, I can see why that would. That is freaky. What the heck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, and then you know, joking. Have you been anesthetized recently? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a swamp monster. I mean, so you can make light of it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Is it is it a bad idea to make a joke of it and make it even sound silly? Like, this is, is it a swamp, friend. You maybe can do it's a swamp monster? Want. Whatever you think makes sense. It, it, it's uh, it's <clears throat> no easy answer. Anything. It's all like, what makes sense to you? It, in the situation, is it somebody you can joke with? Is it somebody who you're like, oh, man, they're going to go off the rails on something weird in a minute? Or is it just like. Mm -hmm swamp monster or you know hey i hear there's a chupacabra and maybe that's a, i don't know you could do whatever you want but it's up to you but the idea is just to be open not belittle them give sympathy listen yeah, be be disarming yeah yeah, yeah. i'm open because remember the goal is to become the person that people will come to when they have strange beliefs or something more harming and they come to you and they say you know, this is weird. Okay, so now you did good. Done good job. Good job. Now I'm going to show you something a little further. Your friend feels a little more comfortable with you. And they say, hey, 
yeah, you're right. It is kind of odd. I don't know how I got it. You know, they answer the questions that you just asked them. Now they're going to confess to something a little bit more. And what they're going to confess to you, because they feel comfortable talking to you now, is they did a little Google search and they found this video. All right. And you're going, mm -hmm, a video. All right. So they found this video. And in this video, now here's what they're saying to you. Okay. There's this guy. He's really famous. Jacques something. And he's in France and he has this really awesome accent. And he's at this <laughs> conference and he is at this conference and there's thousands of people there and they're giving him a lot of attention. And he says that people are always contacting him with pictures, just like the ones I showed you. And they think that it's, uh, might be UFO related because all the people who contacted him have UFO experiences and they also have the marks on them. So this guy uh, had a conference or something in a talk and he, he, that's something like that, something, something. Okay. So that's what the person's told you. Just like that. In other words, they don't have any more detail than what I probably told you right now, but they watched a video. Now I'm going to show you two screenshots and I want, I want your opinion on this. What I want you to do is I want you to think of this from the perspective of your friend. All right. So not as you guys having been in the world of scientific skepticism and critical thinking for a long time, but what is it, take turns, what is it you see when you see this? This is a screenshot from the video, okay? This is the header. What would you say? Leonard, start off. What, what would your friends see? Oh, a, a white-haired gentleman who looks very distinguished. Right. What do you think, Brian? A cult leader. A cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> from their no, from their perspective, not yours. From their perspective. What do they see? <laughs> um, yeah, a very probably educated, uh intelligent man who's who's got some, you know, theories on on contact from aliens, I guess. And it's a it's obviously a very important thing because it's a a global mm -hmm. phenomenon. Yes. Global. And you know he's smart because he's got books. A book. <laughs> he's, he's what? There's two books. So you know. Yeah, he's two smart. books. <clears throat> yeah. And gray yeah, hair. Yeah. So twice hair. twice twice as smart as as one book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So when and I he's, what and there's worlds like, in the back and everything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very... I mean, it looks beautiful. And there's an mm -hmm. alien here. Um, it's just worldwide. It's so from the perspective of the person who doesn't know any different, this can look really amazing. When I did this uh workshop for the very first time in uh, Salinas, my boyfriend said, Susan, don't you know who that is? I'm like, no, who is it? And he says, That's Jacques Valley. Valley. Valet. He's a very famous uh, UFO person. I think the 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 story is, is the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind was based on his life and research. Really? Yeah. Oh. So this is a very famous man in the world of UFOs. Very hmm. famous. People know who he is. I also kind of cringed, and some people say they cringe at the font. You know. <laughs> yes. Very sad. Yes. But then again, if it is the movie Close Encounters, they're kind of pulling on then that makes sense and it does especially using the phrase close encounters right okay here's the second oh yeah screenshot. now here yeah. he is at the conference and he is standing on the stage and he is talking to a large audience you never see the audience but it sounds like there's a lot of people there but especially when they get into the q a tell me what you see when you see this picture from the perspective of your friend a very serious, thoughtful person. Yeah, like a, almost looks like a professor or lecturer, teacher. But he's he's obviously emotionally invested in what he's saying because of he's he's mid gesticulation. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything else? How about the fact that he's on a stage? Yep. That's why, yeah, I would say 
teacher, lecturer, professor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Argument from authority. Except yeah. I'm not going to throw that into anybody's face. Right? Yeah. So, so the point, and, and he's got all the attention, this huge audience. If you were to watch the video, you would see they're all hanging on to his every word. So obviously mm. very famous. He has a computer, so he must be smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got cufflinks on. Some people notice he has cufflinks. Mm. So that, boy, that says professor right there. You know? Right. <laughs> so. All right, so this is what, so I want you to think about what it's, what your friend is learning from their perspective. So try to, try to look at it from their point of view. They do not have the benefit of all of your years of uh, skeptical thinking. They are seeing it for the first time. They've never looked into anything like this before. They're thinking this is a pre professorial uh, man of prestige. People are attending conferences and paying to, they're going to the desert and they're paying to see this guy. So obviously he must have some good information, right? Yeah. Okay. Now your friend is a little more comfortable to tell you a little bit more. So they saw this video and in the video, as I said, people are sending him screenshots of their marks on their body and they're all different. And they have UFO experiences too. So therefore, UFOs, burn marks on your body equal alien something, right? So here's another screenshot. This is from the video. You don't have to go into great depth, but this is kind of what he's saying. He's going on saying that people send him these, these marks on their body, all different kinds. And then um, a little bit later, there's some sort of UFO experience that they can relate it to. And so he thinks there's some kind of relationship. So your friend is kind of telling you what's on the screen. Um, kind of a little muddled. You know, they don't quite have the story down themselves. They only watched the video once. But, you know, one happened in October of 2016. And then the other happened in 2017. And there was all this detail about these people in the back seat, And this woman was a really smart woman and this like his slide or, yeah, this or... Is his slide from the, from the video and wow. how there's they took pictures with a cell phone of this object over the top of the car and it was a two-year-old samsung phone i mean all this detail they're collecting about this stuff and it's, it's just really interesting how how a lot of the ufo community goes into detail thinking they're creating collecting evidence yeah but it's not, you know, they're, they're looking at it from a viewpoint that isn't quite, you know, uh, they think they're doing science and yeah. to a person who's not really in this world, they would think this is science because yeah. oh my gosh, you know, they've got details like notes and, and dates, and they even know what kind of phone it was. Okay. So your friend has told you that they have gone and see this, they've watched this video and this is what they heard. Now I'm going to put you back in your room, two minutes, talk it over. How are you going to talk to your friend at this point, knowing just what you know right now? You don't know anything about hair dryers. All you know is what your friend just told you in the video. Okay. So go and talk about it really quick. Recording now. Okay. So very curious. Now, what did you tell your friend? Don't you share, Brian? Uh, yeah, well, I just, I liked what Leonard said. He he would bring up the, basically, that it's hard to uh, judge um, uh, perspective of, of like size of objects from distances away. And I think that's a very good point. Like, you know, a plate 20 feet away versus the moon and stuff like that. It's it's hard to judge size of things um, in the sky. So that, that very large disc in being in bold, that statement is quite, you know, interesting. I was, I sort of focused more on the dates and how fallible human memory is and how those are big gaps and dates and, and memories fade. So I think in a big way that, you know, you just people get so much stuff wrong with their, what they remember and don't remember the times that things get reported to, you know, written down and stuff. So, you know. Leonard? Yeah, so I, I uh, the the fact that there was one phrase there 
that was in bold, uh, a very large gray disc. Um, when you see an object in the sky, uh, and, and I have a lot of experience with this because of my astronomy background and talking to people that, that visit the observatory, um, mm -hmm. they will often see something that's small and close and think it's huge and something that's large but far away and think it's tiny. Uh, and they just, they, you, you have no reference because there's nothing known to compare it to. And that makes it really, really hard to be accurate. Uh, so not only are people's memories incredibly um, unreliable, uh, people's current experiences uh, are also pretty unreliable. This is so interesting. I've done a bunch of these classes and you guys are talking completely different than other classes have had discussions. That's why I want you to do this outside of me, my, my attention. So you both are concentrating on the facts. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I've been known to do that. Okay. Me too. All yeah. Right. So, so the issue is not, let's start debunking what they found. What is it you should be telling this person is Wow, that's really interesting. Can I see the video? Because by immediately attacking them, even though you're doing it in a nice way, you're using your right. inside voices and your kind voices, you're basically saying, what an idiot you are. How could you watch this video and not that I have not seen and, and immediately come to the conclusion that this is alien abductions or whatever it is and how dumb because da da da. So yeah, I guess the right the right first reaction is, wow, that looks neat. Can that I is watch really it? Really cool. Yeah. Wow. Can I see this video? Will you send it to me? And then I'll, let me watch it and I'll get back to you on it, you know, or whatever. Because this is a person you're seeing regularly, right? Right. Right. And you want them to think that you have an open mind. Yeah. This is a conversation we're having over time. So that I'm investing in this good conversation with you now, so that later we'll be able to have better conversations about things that are really weird. So right. try not to go to the debunking, try not to go to the facts, try to go to the wow, that is really cool. Okay. So one and, and, and uh -huh. at some level, it's just important to make sure that you do that uh, so you have a shared experience. True. Right. You can't expect them to look at something that you are going to show them later if you haven't looked at their stuff. Right. Remember, from their perspective, they watched this video and they found it convincing. Right. All right. Yeah. So one thing you might say, <clears throat> and this is probably legit, is that I saw that one of the things happened in 2016 and the other happened in 2017. But there's nothing that. I don't know why it would be related I mean, there's probably yeah. that's a lot of time. I mean, why would a burn or this mark on your body appear and you think that it's associated with the UFO? There's no, yeah, you know, there's no Jewish space lasers, you know, people as they walk by or something. So I think that might be fair to say, but for the most part, what you're trying to do is engage them in a conversation that will continue without debunking them. Now we're going to talk about debunking and pre-bunking in a minute, but at the moment okay. is. The idea is, is you guys are not trying to win the bigger battle. I mean, you're trying to win the bigger battle, but to, but if you, if you're, if you're dying on a certain hill, if you're just like, let's win this little battle, we can't win the bigger picture of war. You know, you can't, let's, let's, let's concentrate on that. There's a bigger perspective here. Okay. So now here's your imaginary friend says, oh, here, Brian, here, Leonard, here's the video, right? So they send you the video or they give you the, they give you enough information. You can find the video. And you go and you watch this video. All you're doing is watching the video. And you say, okay, I've I've watched it. You took notes. You, you've said, okay, this is, this is something else. And then you're going to go back to your friend and you're going to say, check it out. I, uh, you know, hey, I know at work today, we, um, uh, during break, during lunch break, I want to sit down with you and show you, show you, let's talk about this video. And they say, cool, I'll sit down with you. So it's respectful, right? They told you your story. You took, you took, you were considerate enough to actually look at their evidence. 
or what they think is evidence. And so what you did is you watched the video and not only did you watch the video, but you kind of did a little Google search. Now it's probably, how do you think of your friend would feel if you went to them and said, Hey, I watched your video. It was ridiculous. I could, couldn't even get through it. It was so stupid. Okay. They're not going to have a really good reaction to that. Right. Because they believe the video. And if you say, I Googled it and I came up with this article by Mick West and here's your answer, you idiot. And then you walk away, right? They're not going to really appreciate that. They're going to make- Obviously you got to pick and choose who you're going to be this thoughtful for because otherwise you're going to spend lots of time looking at videos that you think are stupid. This is just one video and you did- Yeah, and it's a friend. And it's a friend. And it's a or, good friend. Or a yeah. family member, so, somebody you yeah. want to have a relationship with. Right? Yeah. Not somebody you friend. need to have a relationship with. Yeah. Not somebody on not the just, internet. Not a troll. Not somebody on the street. Yeah. No. no. This is yeah. your this is your, your sister-in-law or yeah. your, whatever that you have to have relations, some kind right. of relationships with. Okay. So right. you, you watch the video and you did a Google search, and I'm gonna show you a screenshot. And this is from um oops. This is from um, Metabunk, which is one of the websites. You know, this is, oh, this is what, oh, I forgot to show you. This is from Jacques' video. I forgot to show you this. Mm. So these are all these patterns that are coming up, right? So these are, this is a website that Jacques has been collecting all of these photographs. And so they've been putting them in this um, website for people to understand. So, so also on the video, people seem to think that this is some sort of coding for the aliens. I don't know if it's like branding people like you would do a cow or something, or maybe it means this one's vaccinated and this one's not. This human's been impregnated and this one's not. But most of the time, oh. it's women that are getting, um, having this happen to. Most of the I kind of wish you didn't mention hair dryers. <laughs> that's, that's all I keep thinking about. I was wondering, I wonder how I would think about it if you said that this was really happening and, and you didn't mention hair dryers and how I would have, would have yeah, this. I kind of give it away, but then I did it in the reading in case people uh, get a chance to do the reading ahead of time. So huh. what appears in the video is as that Jacques thinks it's some sort of possible, he doesn't really say some sort of huh. branding thing, but they do talk about it being uh, women related. Okay, so in Mick West's article, <laughs> it does show the fronts of hair dryers and right. how it corresponds to the um, to the hair dryer oh, the burns. In the back. They have these burns, so they're all different. So, huh. um, so your friend is now. Uh, so That's an amazing coincidence. It's an amazing coincidence. They just happen to be exactly <laughs> matching. So, do the aliens use hair dryers or what? <laughs> and, and you to, don't to, to leave their they mark. Put you under first. And then okay. They, they zap you. Okay. So, so you found this article by Mick West, and and this is the article that you found by Mick West. You did a Google search, or you did a um, whatever. <clears throat> you found this, or you you had you're a reader of Skeptical Inquirer, so you act you obviously just happened to have already read this no no it's not that, it's not that clear so you find this and you're looking at the article and you hear about the hair dryers and you hear about metabunk which is where um mick west blogs and he does crowd sharing crowd crowdsourced investigation so mick west said hey i heard about this thing that's going on jacques jack valet 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 Valet. Has done and something about hair dryers it seems like it relates to hair dryers and mick throws this out to his community and the community comes in and they just find all these pictures and examples and hair, hair dryers. And they do a lot of the work. So it's a crowdsourcing, kind of like what I do. I have like, I manage groups of people who, who are doing a lot of the work. I'm not doing, I'm not sitting down and all the work myself. Other people do that. So hmm. you now have this under your belt. You've watched the video and you've done a little research by Googling around now, what do you do? Because if you just hand this article to your friend and say, done, what do you think is going to happen? 
how are they going to feel if you just handed them Nick West's article and said, here you go, it's hair dryers. They're going to, yeah, they're going to be probably annoyed with you and still maybe dig in deeper, possibly, I guess. Why would they want to dig in deeper? Um, because, because they don't human. want to be proved wrong. <laughs> right. So they're not saving face. You're making them feel stupid because you found yeah. it. Why couldn't they have found it? Yeah. So they're That's gonna true. they're gonna I call the circling the cognitive dissonance wagons. They're they're gonna be like, absolutely, I'm gonna fall further into the rabbit hole because I don't want to look like an idiot. And I want to look like, well, you just don't really, you just didn't take it into consideration. And Mick West is just a UFO detractor and he's got an agenda and big, big UFO, big science. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So now you have to have a conversation with your friend. I suggest not sharing the UFO uh, Mick West article with them. So how are you going to have a conversation with your friend? I'm going to make you guys talk again. How are you going to have a conversation with your friend about what you now know? But allowing your friend to save face so that mm. they feel like they they came to this conclusion themselves, right? Or right. they figured it out. I'm not dumb. Oh, okay. So, so I'm not going to give you what I think. I want you guys to go and talk about it really quick. Okay. So I'm really curious. What did you say? I think just if, well for me it was just like um let's just let's, i would say to my friend that's very fascinating isn't that so cool let's let's just see what other people think about it and what are, are the possibilities like let's see does everybody agree or there is, is there other explanations or other possibilities that we could check out or or does everyone agree because that's very cool and interesting and it's fascinating if everyone thinks this is like aliens but let's that's, check out the possibilities point. you've changed a lot from the last hour boy that's that's a really <laughs> well, good approach i like your whole attitude you look like you're smiling it's it sounds like you were you and your friend are going to do this together kind of like a oh wow yeah. let's figure this out that's cool is there other people who've done this mm -hmm. very good Leonard, yeah i uh i so i i do this kind of thing a lot um, because I deal with the public um, at uh, the Chabot Space and Science Center. Mm -hmm. So they will ask questions about things in the sky or stuff they've read about. And uh, I've gotten good at asking questions that get them to think in a particular way. Mm -hmm. So you try to guide their imagination and their questioning to um in this case you're trying to get them to realize that this looks like the front of a hair dryer and hair dryers are hot and can give you burns uh, but at all costs you avoid saying any of those words um unless you know you you just run out of patience which you should carefully cultivate and never do so you you if if they mention these look like burns, then you can start there. But if they don't, you go, oh, what other things on the skin look like this? What mm -hmm. could this be? Uh, you know, do do you uh, use a lot of red uh, magic markers? And could you have written this on yourself accidentally? And perfectly in a circle. In a perfect circle, because because um, you're an artist or something, uh, but all, you bring up other alternate explanations that are simultaneously easy to dismiss and will guide them in the direction um, that you want them to go. Uh, and you're guiding, you're not hurting. Right. So you could you could joke. Wow, oh, maybe it is space aliens. Yeah, spent, senses of humor is always a good maybe, thing. Maybe there's a better next. 
maybe it's Bigfoot. <laughs> right, obviously right. not space aliens. So the next opportunity is Bigfoot. And of course, yeah. Bigfoot being so hairy clearly needs to have a hair dryer. <laughs> Maybe it's leprechauns. I like leprechauns. Well, they're hairy too. <laughs> smart. No, but that was half. So one of the other. But they have long beards. Yeah. Oh, they, do you dry your beard with your with the hair dryer? Uh, no. We're getting but, visited. We're going to be visited here right now by your common friend, Adrian. Oh my gosh! It's a giggler. Wow. Hello. Hello. I haven't heard you giggle in an hour. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, I, I watched. I listened to the most recent episode of of the Zone, and the Easter egg has uh, several of your giggles in it. Oh no! <laughs> I probably won't listen to it till tomorrow because I've got family coming, and uh, to my mom and dad's place, so it's going to be very busy. And I'll try and just say, oh, we're going to listen to the zone now during dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah, because what else would you want to do? Of course. I saw it pop up on my feed this morning and I said, I need to eat breakfast. <laughs> I had stuff to do before this class. So, uh, Adrian, we're at the point right now where they're, they've, I, I just told Brian, I said, from the beginning of this video to now, what a change. He's, He's got it. I think he's kind of got the understanding. Your perspective is from the mindset of your friend's perspective. You're not gaining any points by belittling them and attacking them. But wow, this is cool. Well, hopefully I can keep that in mind. It's well, one thing to, it takes, it to do practice. it here and say it here. Practice. but Yeah, yeah. Um, practice. practice. <laughs> one of the things that um, you could also use is that now you know that hair dryers are involved and also this is a phenomenon that's mostly female related so you yeah. could inject that little bit of information into the conversation saying i wonder why it's always females or almost always yeah. females that seems odd because the aliens only want to do sexual experiments on females come well, on impregnate them you know of course <laughs> well we, we know that it's mostly males that are pilots <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's why it's mostly females right right it, and <laughs> you want to avoid the idea that it's because um women uh are more imaginative well you know male aliens are trying to figure out females just like male humans are trying to figure out females oh i give it up <laughs> even females are trying to figure out females come on <laughs> oh we got it down aliens no Adrian and I, we, we know this stuff right it, it, oh yeah, yeah. Adrian and i both raised boys so for some reason or other we got we we've got you all figured out and i don't know <laughs> so okay do, so, do neither of you have any so i know susan you don't have any um female children you don't either so, no. oh, okay so must be uh, uh must be because the, that, that's the why aliens. you're skeptics <laughs> it's the aliens yeah there's no girls in our household yeah there's a skeptical yeah. relationship there yeah <laughs> okay so where are you guys at now here's the thing see if i wanted me to roll these out when we start talking about doing them with this idea there's a there's an article out and you guys did see it at psycon hey all of us were at psycon together yep the Nick Tiller had yeah. gone up and he had done an article on pre-bunking, debunking, and so on. In fact, the theme of PsyCon was a lot of this pre-bunking idea. And I've been doing this for a very long time uh, with the idea of, I called it inoculation theory, that if you give people enough information on how to kind of think about things, give them a little more information, they're more likely to be able to figure it out. For example, a multi-level marketing scam is got so many elements to it. I mean, you could even talk about romance scams are in the same kind of vein. And so if you you can't debunk every single multi-level marketing scam that comes along because there's still an outrageous amount of them that might come up. Mm -hmm. So if you can give them the idea of what a multi-level marketing scam is, you know, there's these people, they come up with this idea, this Ponzi scam, and it goes down. And, and, and then the and then at the end is all these people at this lower level that are trying to um, uh, recruit their friends and family to make it even a bigger base. 
make it even more out here. And they're, they're recruiting to get the money. And then the money goes to the people at the top. And it never seems to trickle down to the little people, except maybe in very small doses. And, and it just keeps doing that. And it keeps, so if you can kind of give somebody this idea of a multi-level marketing scam in a pre-bunking way, inoculating way, then when they encounter something that's similar, they'll say to themselves, hey, you know, I heard about something like this. This this sort of sounds like that. What was it? Like a pyramid thing? <clears throat> and then they have enough knowledge to look it up. So in other words, they're able to save face. They have enough inoculated information. Because like I said, you can't inoculate everybody from everything. So when whenever I was talking to CFI about doing these workshops, they wanted me to start with the Nick Tiller um, article which you guys may or may not have read. And I read it three times and I still said, this is just too academic. I am having problems with it because I'm not an academic person. So I said, let's start with something simpler. Let's pick the hairdryer motif. And then maybe we'll use that as a way of getting to it now. So my question to you guys now is, the, the article by Mick West is a debunking article. Okay, he's, right. he's here's, the, here's the answer article, right? So we probably all agree that inoculating people is a great idea, giving them something of, of the idea so that, that whenever they're encountering something that's more difficult, they have a basis to, to, to go on. So what is the value? Okay, this is, I'm asking you a question. What's the value of a debunking article? What is, does there, is there any value in what Mick West is doing when we know that what we need to do is deep is pre-bunking? I think there are two uh, two ways in which articles like Mix are uh, valuable. One is in this specific case, it gives you a uh, an alternative explanation that isn't immediately obvious. And mm -hmm. if you ever run into this particular claim, you'll know where to go. The other is Mick is very good and, and this, this article um, is a, a good example of explaining the process that he uses. Mm -hmm. And it shows you how, gives you an example and the general explanation of how to think about things. You, you need to start here have an open mind, look at what could happen. When you come up with an idea, check to see if it's true. If you wonder, you know, in the case of, of this article, oh no, that couldn't be a uh, the mark from a burn because you'd remember a burn because those hurt like hell. Mm. But as he found out in this um in this article, or in the lead up to this article, uh, you can have very minor burns, so minor that they don't leave an immediate mark and you may not remember them. Mm -hmm. But yeah. over time, the mark will show and can last for weeks. And you haven't put the, in the burn that you had that you momentarily hurt. Right. You yeah. haven't registered and it. Mark, yeah. Don't there's too much time passes. Yeah. And, so, and sounds mean, like you've read the article. Yeah, I have read <laughs> I have read the article. Because uh, you've got an advantage there. I, I haven't read it, but if he, that's the way he does it and he leads well, person he does, down the path. Oh so that's of his really articles good. are like that. Right. Huh. Mick is Mick is exceptional in that way. The only question I have is is it too complex for most people? No, Mick's Better. really Mick is Mick is he quite good. Down with a lot of illustrations and stuff. Yeah, Mick's, but it does, Mick's really I good. I think at it that. gets a little technical because I mean, he even gets into like what is the temperature that he used and right. I think in some cases, some people would say that yeah, this is a little advanced because it is sciencey. You're physics yeah. sciencey. You. Yeah. So so your so Susan's tolerance for um, advanced and my tolerance for advanced are let's say different 100 and i'm in between <laughs> so, so brian makes a really good point whenever it's used 
yeah. you know, it may not be the level of what is needed. Mm -hmm. Depends on the person, the audience, right. but you might even need to explain it further and break it down even further. Because I've had, I know people who would look at an article like Nick's with the illustrations and the numbers and the temperatures and go, I ain't reading this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but what does it say? I don't get it. Just tell me. Just tell yeah. me. And and I don't think they would get it. So Brian, do you have any other takeaways on what I said about pre-bunking and debunking? And what is the value of having articles like mix that give the answer, even though they show the process? Uh yeah. I mean, I think it's I like multi-pronged approach. Well, I think having lots of different methods and you know is 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 valuable. You know, you don't want to have although always have somebody really stride and really aggressive on their approach and but you also don't want to have somebody always super nice and super i think it's good to have multiple approaches to 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 debunking pre-bunking all that stuff i think is good and and like leonard said when somebody's trying to find possible explanations you want to have these possible answers out there sort of thing so yeah and it's and it's not only different approaches uh where you contrast you know being really nice to being really strident yeah. it's also um different levels of um detail yes uh, that's or, yeah and and or sophistication yeah uh, you can explain things in detail using a um an advanced vocabulary or you can explain things in detail um using a vocabulary that a three-year-old would understand or sometimes uh, a it just takes YouTube, longer sometimes a little youtube video or sometimes mm -hmm. written sometimes yeah it's it's podcasts yeah, I, sometimes it's... I, i've been watching a lot of youtube videos recently and i have uh, come to the conclusion that the vast majority of stuff on youtube is somewhere between dead wrong and highly misleading <laughs> of course, of course I would say that. Okay, depends so on who you watch. Uh, there's some I like. Yeah, yeah, okay. Very, very few, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Litter just got be careful. Bad. Yeah. I got I gotta run. I'm just okay, popping. Bye, Adrian. Thanks for stopping by and saying good to see you, good good guys. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, Adrian. <laughs> nice little treat. So, okay, so going back to this really quick, because you guys got this, I think, for the most. Let's hope you hang on to this for a while and then keep practicing it in daily. <laughs> He's talking to me in our daily life in your daily life and you talk to people but what i think with the debunking articles like a mick west and there's a lot of conversation in the skeptic community and brian's brian's girlfriend might be right on the button when she says that you guys are you know kind of aggressive and you guys are all know-it-alls and i'm yeah. telling her i i assume I, I i assume i'm getting her right where she says you know skeptics like, are such jerks you know like she's she's heard matt del hunty talking i'm supposed to talk to this afternoon because oh, we're okay. trying to invite him to our conference in calgary tell him, hi. Tell him i said hi okay we will do me too okay we will do and <laughs> um what do, you know he's but say? he some I, I i i really like matt i like his his when his you know i like hearing him because he's so logical i find him the most logical debater out there but i can see why lots of people aren't crazy about him i know lots of people that aren't even skeptics and stuff that are not crazy about you're his approach in that bubble. what's that you're already in that yes bubble. for so sure and she's a psychologist and she's she's very smart but yeah, she's very, um, she, I think she thinks that us atheists and skeptics were so, yeah. And, and she thinks that feelings and, and people's experiences also are important and how, and if you're just really try to think about logic all the time, she says love isn't logical and lots of things are not logical and you can't just talk logic and convince people with things with logic all the time. So she was glad I was taking this class, but she <laughs> also says that she feels like I need to do some like um, therapy around around you know um, stuff like this, just because I'm I am so like almost like it just makes me triggered. And, and she's I don't know if you know what ART therapy is with a hand waving, but I was skeptical of that. But actually, I think it's got good science behind it. But it's um it's interesting. She's recommending I do it. So well, like, you know, and you think about it, you're your brains work a little differently than some other people's brains and we yeah and i know a lot of these engineering type people that are just so factual that it it is yeah. almost like an a, 
a, a version or a, it, it feels creepy to them if there's something that's incorrect, right, Leonard? Yeah, like, I resemble that comment. <laughs> but so we do think differently. And there's other people who have their brains kind of work more like they're more into the stuff that's it's okay, you know. Oh, well, so yeah. just let it go. So what it's misspelled, you know, get over yeah. it. And it doesn't bother them like in a visceral way. So yeah. debunking articles, going back to, to what I was saying, is that with debunking articles, we have the skeptic community as a whole kind of has a people don't 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 like this. It's 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 uh we're mean, we're debunkers, we're whatever this phrase. But yeah. what I think it's been happening is as I do more of these lectures, I think I understand is there's a middle. And what <clears throat> we shouldn't be just taking these junk debunking articles. Hey, I debunked it. Here you go. You're an idiot. I think that they serve a valuable purpose for people who are already questioning. Right. So like if you're at a point where you're like, you know, I kind of wonder about this object, this thing, this, this phenomena. What do you think the critics are saying? And then they can find an article like a, a McWest or whatever, and then they could go, oh i get it they don't have a uh in a, in a case where you don't have a a dog a dog in the show you know you're not it's not a personal experience you're not like a scientologist who's starting to come out and goes and looks at the, the anti stuff maybe they need a they need a gateway maybe they're going to go to that what was the nexus uh the uh the other cult like thing that, that they had a big documentary on a big trial oh nexus. um Nexium. Nexium. Nexium? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So maybe they need to approach it from Nexium's point of view and they can see it from that way or a Jehovah Witness point of view, because then it's not as personal. And then they can kind of see, oh, I see the mentality of this. I see the I see how they draw you in. That's very similar to Scientology. And so maybe from there and then they could go to the debunking articles and then maybe get more out of it. But it's a it's an approach that's I think we miss. We think that we go. We've we've looked into it. We have a solution. Here's the solution. Boom. Now accept it. So if we have approach it from this way, I think so send so send them to watch a Nexium okay. or or documentary or something else. Something that's not a personal attack. Okay. Something that's more of a like a. Um, just around the bat. And Brian Dunning from the Skeptoid podcast has talked about this mm. for a very long time. And what he says is that if you try to find something you agree on is nonsense, then you're more likely to um, have a better conversation mm. and you'll be better able at finding the words that are appropriate. So for mm -hmm. example, if he is has somebody who's coming back, coming to him and saying, UFOs are definitely real. That we've been visited by aliens and so on. What 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 he says is try to find something you like, maybe flat Earth, hollow Earth, something that you both know is you both agree is nonsense, and then say, you know, uh, let's talk about the get them onto the subject of the flat Earth and say what why do those people believe this why what part of evidence is it that they have why can't they see that this is silly you know if you both agree and then you have that conversation about it and then kind of back away and then hopefully the person you're talking to will say you know i, I wonder if i'm too close-minded i wonder what evidence would make me change my mind mm. how come, you know how come we can't get these flat earthers to understand the earth is not flat. Why, why won't they change your mind? What would take the, so if you have a conversation, you also end up using words that are like evidence and a theory, and you come mm. to a common understanding of what that word means, and you will have a better conversation. So now I'm going to give you one more thing because <clears throat> you guys are all advanced now. And in the Jacques, uh, Jacques video, he talks about, and this is something that's in the article with Mick. He talks, I guess he talks to Jacques and he says, so Jacques, it looks like the phenomenon is UFO, is not UFO related. It is hair dryer related. And he says, what do you say to these people who, whenever they have, 
they show you a burn mark and it's clearly a hairdryer mark, right? It matches up with a hairdryer uh, that they have in their household. And Jacques says, what I do is I take those, uh, when, a, when it's obviously hairdryer related, I take those images off of my website and I leave them off my website and I don't say anything because I don't want, I don't want to dissuade people from sending me pictures that are not hair dryer related because they may still be related to UFOs. All right. So Jock, Jock says that. Yeah. So what do you think huh. of that? So then, then you, you're saying you should tell that to your friend or what do you? No, I'm just, I'm saying that it's just asking you to, what do you think of this idea of yeah. slow, just taking the stuff off that has been debunked with a right. hair dryer? But yeah. looking on the other stuff to keep the conversation open, because if he was to take it all down and say, well, 99% of these are hair dryer burns, but what about the 1% we can't explain? He doesn't right. want to take him down because he wants to keep the possibility open for it being yeah. something other than hair dryer. So what do you think of that idea? I don't have well, an answer. I'm just asking. If, if he said that 99% of them are hair dryer, um, then that but would, of course he won't. Of course no, but he won't. If, if 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 he said that, even if he didn't leave the examples up, then yeah. that would give people the opportunity to check to see if that was what happened. Yeah. Um, you know, if he uh, said, you know, the first thing you should do is check to see how closely the front of your hair dryer matches this mark Last on your body. Mark, yeah. Um, yeah. And if there's and some so, that are unexplained. So if, so if he was then, being honest, that's what he would do. Yeah. If he was actually looking for truth, that's what he would do. Yeah. Um, but I'm uh, I'm willing to guess that that's not what he did. That, so my guess is he doesn't, it's not like he thinks he's even dishonest, even though he's not doing that. I feel like these type of people still believe so strongly and even oh, yeah. though he can be presented with the evidence that 99 percent of them are hair dryers right. the other one percent it's like you know who knows but well, I, he's I still think he's, he's he's even then he's not in his view dishonest he's just trying to protect this right this theory that is is in his view is like very troubling he's invested whatever. in it too he's yeah he's invested in absolutely yeah, think, and maybe and maybe he is just a scammer that's earning money i don't know i don't i because i've not experienced with him but obviously you know because there is people like that out there but but there's a lot of them i think that actually do believe they're bullshit too so yeah i mean uh, so one of the things that i found most illuminating from my time as a skeptic is realizing the value of saying i don't know mm. this actually is a mystery we yep. won't be able to prove every example of everything mm -hmm. sometimes yep. the answer is we don't know yep. yet yep. let's look let's keep an open mind let's yep. um accept as a preliminary evaluation, but leave open the opportunity for other possibilities. Mm -hmm. So if you see this kind of thing, it's probably a hairdryer, but it might not be. And let's keep our eyes open for unusual things yep. that might teach us something interesting about hairdryers. I agree. And I think that's I think that's the the value of of having these kind of conversations. We we need to be able to let the person save face. We need to let them feel like they participated and they are making decisions and they're not an idiot. They figured it out too. You just kind of help guide them to the information. Right. And now hopefully they will want to have more uh, have conversations with you because you were respectful and you were open that are a little more difficult. Maybe vaccinations maybe religion maybe uh you know something a lot more valuable maybe getting continuing their treatment that the doctor has recommended for their for their cancers or, or for cancer or whatever also mm -hmm. the another reason that this is a, is a valuable resource is because you're able to 
um, introduce them to, or, and I'm introducing you guys, hopefully, well, I know Leonard already knows Nick, but the idea that there are resources out there. And um, when I present this workshop to larger groups of people, a lot of them have never heard of Mick West. And so right. they're able to say, oh, this is a resource for me. I went and looked into this and now I read this and now I'm understanding this information he has. Oh, he does Kim trials. Oh, he also does this. Oh, he also does that. Oh, I get it. So I think there's a huge community out there in our uh, skeptical community that are wonderful resources in little areas like mine is psychics. Um, that's my thing. So, and I just put a whole bunch of series of videos up, I'm up to six one, two, three, four, five, six, seven now on a debunking psychics. But again, it's a debunking video. So it's it's like for people who who are not wholly invested in it to look at or people who are curious about it, but pure believers probably shouldn't start off with a video of mine. In fact, <laughs> I just got a video. I just got an email this morning from a woman who uh, just found my work and she's she was telling me how she she just got her money back from the psychic and she's she says it's just very fresh and she has a, a, a child who's died recently and she now starts starting to understand that these are people who are preying on people who are in grief but i said had you seen my video on this particular psychic and she says i think it's still too fresh for me right now i'm still kind of getting over it in my mind and i need to she says you know she's really fresh to cry she's like i'm i'm already crying over a lot of the stuff i'm just just the thought that I, somebody could try to con me and use my child who's died as the method to get in so she says i'm not mm -hmm. ready for it yet but i think i'm going to look at them later and maybe someday i will come and help you guys with um combating psychics now she probably still believes in psychics she just well wow. this particular psychic Right. But she, right. she's on a journey. It's it's a it's a, some people, especially when you find out you've been taken advantage of, it's too much to take in. So it's best to kind of just just do it a little in little bits. And when you're ready for it, these articles are out there. And that's the benefit of Wikipedia too. It's same. If you're ready for it, you can take advantage of it. But when you're not ready for it, you just can know they're there. What's the best way to? what's uh nick mcwest has he got articles is he podcast what's the best way to yes, check him out he has a podcast it's called um I just found tales, tales from the rabbit tales hole. from the rabbit hole have, yeah that's good it. he's having conversations with people who have come out he also has okay. a book called uh, yeah he so he's got a website called metabunk he's on um cnn and lots of other uh, is he? yeah oh. things a, a lot so okay. many people, many more people have seen and heard Mick West than realize they have. Yeah. Okay. You'll I go, probably oh, have I too. Yeah. Heard of that? He's yeah. been on because of all these UFO videos that have been released. Re released. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, he's Canadian. So right? we have so many resources, but actually somebody should compile or say like, if you have, you know, UFOs, this that we should have something that sort of oh, gives you. It's the called links. Wikipedia. Well, <laughs> you, know, you, Google, you Google it, you Google, you Google a UFO sighting or anything like that. You're going to get a Wikipedia article in the Wikipedia article because it's so well written. You're going to be able to read through it and you're going to go, you'll see the experts because we're really careful huh. making sure we put those experts in there. And then those people have Wikipedia pages and you can learn about them. So Wikipedia is the, like the ultimate Google source. So that you can just yeah. go in and it'll, it should if we've done our jobs right, the people, the the group I work with, the Wikipedia group I work with, if we've done our jobs right, we're steering you towards that. So we we really purposely do this. All, all kinds of vaccines and and ghosts and psychics and UFOs yeah. all steer you to the experts. And the experts have Wikipedia pages, and the best information is in the citations at the bottom. So mm. It is I good. just think up. I just think a place where we could have the resources. Like here's a resource like Nick West. Here's this. Yeah, there like there I are there are a couple. Of, Rational uh, Wiki, I think, is a good one. Yeah, I think. yeah. There there are a couple um, of such sources. Um, yeah, Wikipedia is the top search. You're but, not going to yeah. get away from Wikipedia. So people have yeah. asked me about let's fix up these other ones. I'm like, okay, they get a hundred views. Wikipedia gets a hundred thousand views. So right, the yeah. best place to go is to Wikipedia because that's really where people are going. Google sends hmm. you there. Everybody sends you there. So, yeah. But as you 
progress, maybe you learn about Chat GPT questions. soon enough. Oh, yeah. You, you definitely want to avoid that as a source of information. <laughs> As but Chat GPT might take you is pulling is was trained on Wikipedia. It was it was trained on the entire internet. So and some Wikipedia of Wikipedia. Yeah. Well, that's that's that's. that's last time I checked, Wikipedia was accessible on the internet have, via the internet. Have you heard Wikipedia is on the internet? Anyway, so all right. So I'm ending this up. We are ending early. I want to know if you had any aha moments. Who wants to say what? Aha! Aha! Aha moments about this workshop. Well, I didn't know Adrian was going to drop in, so. You're not psychic. Clearly. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I I think it was good. Like you said, I, I changed from the beginning to the end. I just need to put it in practice. But the video will go, oh, he got it. <laughs> are, right, so is this video going to be public? Or yeah, like yeah, of course. Us recording this? Okay. Yeah, maybe you know we're going to be celebrities now, are we? You are going to be uh, in the in the next viral video. <laughs> All 25 viewers will watch this and, and learn from it. And 25, <laughs> 25 billion. Who oh, knows? you know how I've got. I'll, I'll send you a link, Brian. That's fine. Are you on hmm. Facebook? I Not much? Yeah, not much. Okay. I don't do it much, but you can, you can be, be skeptical. Yeah. Kernick is my Facebook name. Oh, okay. Well, if, be you, skeptical. if you friend me on Facebook, you will, you will, you could, I communicate mostly by messenger, but so okay. Linda, did you have any aha moments besides Adrian showing up? Nope. This is what you thought I was going to do. Oh, it was pretty much what I thought you were going to do. And as I said, the, the whole process of talking to people that aren't necessarily ready to get a, a, a complete explanation um, and aren't eager to be talked out of their uh fringe views is something that i'm i'm very practiced at yeah you have to work with the community you have to yeah. you can't just come in and say no you idiot yeah exactly <laughs> i mean uh i mean i met a flat earther up at the uh at the science center and when you are a volunteer you're a uh you know a public face of the institution uh, your response should not be, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and that was yeah. not my response. So exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up on YouTube. It'll take an hour or so. But one of the things that if you want, if you think this is valuable and you think we should do more of these, let other people know. And I will put together another class. It's nice having two people because we have a better conversation, but I mean, it's fun, but you know, we could go further. Obviously, the class takes a little longer when there's more people, depending on their levels of where they're at. But I'm happy to do more of these. Just give me like four or five people that you know for sure are going to show up and I'll tell me what time and I'll, I'll just put one on. I'm retired. Also, I have two more lessons planned. I did them in person. I haven't done them over Zoom and the people are waiting for me to put those together. So I'll do that, but um, probably next weekend. But the next one is on the Mandela effect. And the next one after that is on luck. And I use, and what I'm trying to do is use these to bring our community a little bit more back together again and having conversations. I love that people are meeting each other who have not known each other before. I think that's important. It's like a mini conference yeah. and uh, getting to know people, putting faces to names and that kind of thing and introducing just different experts in our community that you start going oh okay i oh now because of that person i found of this person because of that person i go to this person and i think we're all kind of a little connected all of this is critical thinking the more work i do with psychics the more i realize how connected it is to romance scams and to facilitating communication and to this and to that right. they're all connected it's a con and well they're all connected by the cognitive biases and and mental, failed to yeah, and failed things. heuristics of people the things you forget to make the connection, the things you miss. Yeah, it's right. all connected to each other. But anyway, so I'm going to let you guys go about your day. I will upload the video. I will send you a link. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And share. Uh, I don't know if you want to share this. Because if if your friends watch this video, then they're not going to want to do the workshop. Because it's going right. to be like, I gave it away kind of at the end. But if you yeah. want, I mean, if they'll never do the workshop and they, you think they would find it valuable please do that. But I'm happy to put on more of these workshops. And I'm also happy to put on workshops changed a little bit. Maybe if a group you have 
feels like um, this would be a better help. Maybe maybe if you approached it from this way, we have this problem in our community. Right. Uh, I'm happy to do that. And to give you guys all the instructions, once you've gone through my whole three series one, give you the instructions, you can go and do it on your own in your group, your local group, workshop, whatever. But some mm. people don't have speakers, right? They can't bring in speakers. It's, it's such a pain. But you could possibly do a workshop with your group. And that would be easier in a situation where you don't have a monthly speaker in your right. local group. But anyway, that's, that's good, Susan. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Nice to, nice to see you. And uh, you too, see you again right? at SciCon. Yeah, SciCon next year. Right. Oh, God, this is so long from now. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> see you guys.